hold hands if you like each other. So, after all these weeks. Well, on October 10th, 2022, thanks to Facebook, I learned that. George Kelly, although there's lots of wedding pictures on there. Yes. And more to come, right? Yes, yes. All right, so yes. stay tuned. Yeah. George Kelly and Sherry Pinsnell at that time joined together in a covenant of love. They made vows, they exchanged rings, and now they are married, George and Sherry Kelly. Today we wanna to celebrate with them and to pray a blessing over them. But first to fully understand the depth of, of what this covenant of love is, in this day and age we have to define both covenant and love. So we'll start with covenant. It's more than a promise or a handshake. It's an unbreakable agreement. In most other cultures and generations, the breaking of covenant results in death. And anybody who's experienced a divorce, there's a death that comes along with that. In our culture where promises are often broken and a handshake means nothing or very little, the word covenant is a real stretch, isn't it? But this doesn't change its meaning or reduce its validity. And since this is a Christian marriage, we look to the Bible to see the description. So Jesus said, Matthew chapter 19, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one. One flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. The Apostle Paul will later say to the Ephesians, this is a profound mystery. It's a binding, lifelong, one flesh relationship. It's a powerful mis mystery that was instituted by a mysterious, powerful God. There's nothing temporary about it, according to the original biblical definition. Jesus said, love one another the way you want to be loved. That's real good marriage advice. The Apostle Paul again would say to the Ephesians later, Husbands, starts with you, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So there will be death. There will be a dying to yourself. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church. For this reason, a man, he quotes Jesus here, will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Covenant isn't to be mistaken with a contract. If you, then I. Covenant is, regardless of your position, I'm in. And if both of you can come into that, that's powerful. But if there's ever a threat of, unless you, then I won't. Or unless you do, I will, right? It's not a contract. And so this leads us to the definition of love. Our culture teaches that love is a feeling and that you can fall in and out of love. That's bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> this definition cannot be found in the Bible. The Bible describes love as a decision. Decision, not a feeling. First Corinthians Chapter 13, and all the soap operas like to quote. But this is God's word. And listen, to it. it's, it's, it's written in the imperative. It's not a suggestion. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. That's a big one. Don't drag it up. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And listen to the forward progression. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. And it always perseveres. You'll not always want to express love to one another. But these are the times when you rub each other the wrong way. Those are the times that you prove that you are in love. That you love one another. More than in the good times. Even Jesus said, what credit is it to you if you love those who love you back? Even the heathen do that, he says. 
But I tell you, love unconditionally. Choosing to lay down your feelings, your rights, wow, your opinions, and to forgive and invest and swallow your pride in some cases. Love. Love in the tough times. That's when it's proven. In fact, I don't think love can really be proven until there is conflict. So this afternoon, we drag something up. No, no, no. It's, it's no, no records of wrong. Sorry. There is a form of love that is tender, caring, nurturing, affectionate, but when there's no return of tenderness, that contract thing, care, nurture, affection, then they go, love is cut off. No, this is a covenant of love. I will love you as long as you love me. That's not love. Love is a choice, regardless of the actions of the other person. That's why it's very difficult for a non-Christian to love like this. Because the, we're going to hear this in the message later. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, the first one is love. It's not the fruit of the Christian, because we can't pull this off. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit that's working in us to do this. The Bible directs us to love regardless of whether we get anything back in return. So today, we want to pray a blessing over this covenant of love that you've made before God. Now, we haven't done this since COVID, so I know that there's people that may not be comfortable with it, and that's fine. And that there's also people that aren't used to this. Don't consider this a church service. This is just a one big living room. And so I would like anybody who feels comfortable to come and just lay a hand on a shoulder. And uh, and it, and it's, there's nothing. There's nothing super spiritual about this. It's just saying we come into agreement with this union. said, it's not good for you to be alone. So you formed out of Adam, Eve. Adam took one look at that lady and said, there's flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. I'm not alone anymore. Sherry knows lonely times. George knows lonely times. And just at the right time, I witnessed it. You brought me. So what God has joined together, let no one say. Lord, I pray that you give them the strength and tenacity, like a dog holding a bone, to, to perfect this covenant of love, which will never be perfected this side of heaven. We're too flawed. <laughs> but to be determined to get as close as they can. So we come into agreement, we say amen to this, to this marriage. We thank you for bringing them together and we pray your blessing upon them and their extent that now this Brady Bunch family that they have, we pray for, for added, added strength and understanding that, that there'd be a father's heart rise up in George for Sherry's family and that there be a mother's heart rise up in Sherry for George's family. This is where we don't just take pleasure in the blessing. We need it. We covet. Bless them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.